So from a simplistic perspective, remember that we can use search type exploit and we can go and identify the types of exploit that we're after. Once we've chose that exploit, then all the exploits are connected using use command. So use exploit is the folder. And then of course we choose our operating system at this point. So it's either gonna be Windows, Linux or something else. So I'm gonna type Windows. And then we choose the types that are available. I'm gonna use my SMB. And then we'll use the standard one we've used a few times here, which is PS exec. So the PS exec one is the standard one that I wanna utilize just for this. Now, the default payload that gets set is the Windows Meterpreter reverse TCP. For the majority of what you want to do, that might be the best one to utilize, which just returns a Meterpreter shell. The other option would be to use some other type of shell. But first off, let's look at the options that are available to us. It's important to understand these options because these will be different depending on the types of exploit and payload that we utilize. Now, for example, you can see the exploit module here, which is PS exec, and you can see it's got an R hosts, which is gonna be the value that we're gonna to connect to, so the IP address or the subnet. Then we have the port, which is gonna be the SMB service port. We also have a username, password, a domain and a share if that's being utilized. And then of course, any of the service descriptions, etc. Now the payload itself has its own properties, which is really just two of them, which is the L host, which is the IP address of the machine, as in my attacking machine, and then the port that we wish to utilize. So let me just clear this here. So when I'm setting these values, I'm gonna say set R host, and I'll say, 10.100.10.106, which is the IP address we've been using quite a bit. I'm then gonna say set L host, which is this machine, which is 104. And then I can set my L port and L really stands for listening. So I'm gonna just do the standard port that it uses, 4444. And then I'm gonna set my SMB user at this point, which is gonna be trainer. And then I'm gonna say SMB pass, and it's gonna be my super complicated password, like so. So now I've set my core property. So when I now say show options, you'll see these values are all populated. So there's my R hosts, which is my IP. That one's already set. And then I did set these two values here. So my listening address and my listening port. Now, if I just clear this here, we can also type in show advanced which then gives me a whole breakdown of other properties. I'm gonna scroll a little bit here, so bear with me. As we scroll, you'll see there's a whole host of different types of properties that are actually available. So what this means is I can go through and really tweak the connection between them. So for example, this one here, it says executable iCar. It says generate an iCar file instead of a regular payload executable. So we can modify how it's supposed to run. We can do the same for the MSI. So we have some property values that will dictate how the connection is made and the type of exploit or payload that's utilized. We can then determine whether we want to use PowerShell as an executable wrapper, for example. Maybe we wanna put the payload in a loop or maybe we want to set some of the properties of the payload itself, which talks about some of the values or the ports to bind to instead. So the show advanced option lets you really go to town on tweaking and modifying what's there. Now, once I've got my pieces here, I can click exploit. It's gonna go ahead, it says, hey, actually that's wrong. You're trying to execute and it's given me an access denied. And that will be because I either type the wrong password or it's the wrong account or maybe I have a service that's blocking that capability. So obviously once we've figured out what the problem is, then we can obviously carry on connecting to that platform. For this instance, I'm actually using the wrong user. So I'm gonna say set SMB user and I'll say administrator like so, and then we'll run the exploit again. Let me just get rid of all these. Exploit, and you'll see it gives me login failed. So 
These are things that we'd have to figure out. As we're trying to execute an exploit, you're gonna hit some of these problems one by one by one. If I go through and just reset some values here, SMB user, put it back as trainer, because I happen to know the values, and then set our hosts, which is not the right IP address, which is what was causing the problem, like so, and then do exploit. You can see it will now connect to that device and return a connection. And you'll see I've got a interpreter. So just be aware, you may get log on failed, you may get a whole host of other things which are really based around the ability to connect to there. So I now have a interpreter session. So let me just clear this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use what's called a background and that will background that session so I can then clear out and bring us back here. Now if I type the word sessions, you'll see it shows me the sessions that exist but I'm gonna clear that again. Now, what about if we didn't want to use that payload as that mechanism? Maybe we wanted to use a different type of connection. Instead of a interpreter shell, maybe we wanted to set the payload to be Windows shell and just a reverse TCP. So I'm now changing the actual returning piece instead of it being interpreter it's now going to be a shell so what options do we get this time around so we say show options you can see all of the values are still the same so we can leave that as it is if i just do clear and then just say exploit this time it's going to go and connect across send the stager across in the pieces that's needed it'll connect to the machine and this time what do we get back we get a windows prompt instead of a interpreter prompt. So we have the ability to change in between once we get to a target and we can connect to it, we can swap backwards and forwards. So let me come out of that one. That will take me back to here. And then let's say I want to set the payload again to be Windows, interpreter, And this time, when we did the reverse, maybe I don't want to use TCP, I want to use HTTPS. So let's do show options again. You'll see this time we've got same static values for the PS exec for the exploit. But when we come here, it has a L host, L port, and this time an L URI, which is the HTTP path if we wish to use it. We're not gonna set that, but we'll do exploit. This is now gonna go ahead and try and connect across. Same thing as before. And when it's connected, we'll now have a interpreter. I'm gonna choose background, choose sessions, and you'll see that we now have two sessions available to us. So as we're configuring an exploit and a payload, it's important to understand what the exploit is that we use to get onto the machine and then determine whether we used to you need to use multiple payloads or single payloads to be able to transfer whatever information it is that we need from those other machines. So the key thing is here, use the exploit that we need, swap the payloads as needed, or even disconnect and then create new sessions to perform other tasks with different types of exploits.